Hi, this is Janos. This is Real World Audio. And uh, we had a lot of excellent uh, comments on vacuum tube life. So I had the idea to make a little bit of a, well, not kind of a comprehensive or pseudo comprehensive uh, uh, summary on what factors affect tube life in a in an audio amplifier and also in other gear as well. So yesterday I made a quick list, now I'm checking it. Um, just scribble down a, a couple of notes for the specific purpose that I don't get just stuck at like a single thing, like let's say like ventilation or let's say a grid leak or something like that and just spend the whole video on that. But so I see that I'm going down this little list and at least mention all of the points and maybe on later videos I can get into more details. But there's uh, quite a bit of factors that affect the aging, how fast the tubes age in your power tube and, uh, and also when um, you have the skills to, to modify an amplifier or maybe you know someone who can. There's a lot of things that can be done to make sure that, uh, that your amplifier has nice longer lasting uh, tubes in it. So you don't have to get like a, a huge crate of tubes <laughs> for your amp to keep it going and maybe you just have a single pair and it outlasts you. So basically two aging factors. Number one that is uh, the most common is the total dissipation. The, the, what is the amount of heat that the plate structure generates. And uh, when you look at the specification sheet manufacturer gives you what they consider as 100% which is the uh, condition where the tube will give you that amount of power that it's rated for by the manufacturer at certain hours of life expectancy, let's say like 10,000 hours. And however, this, this uh, rating only applies in a condition when there is no forced ventilation, but also the tube is allowed to uh, give that heat to your room or, or to the surroundings. So uh, even though you are dissipating, let's say 100% what the tube is capable of, but you are cramming a ton of power tubes next to each other and we see lots of uh, man manufacturers doing this practice <coughs> Jadi, <coughs> uh, Macintosh <coughs> and, and, and a whole lot more. In that case is when you see those power tubes lining next to each other that's just crying out for help for you to put a strong fan on it because uh, they are even though there's maybe like four or eight power tubes uh, per channel or maybe 16 or more, but uh, because each of them are trying to give heat to the room, but instead of uh, a nice cold air around them, there's another hot tube around them. So they won't be succeeding very much in, in, uh, in uh, dissipating that heat and it, the, the tubes will basically cook. So the, the inside temperature, inside the bulb, inside the plate structure, will be much hotter than is favorable for tube life. So in these cases you can help yourself by putting a fan on it and if it's an amplifier that has a cover that can be removed, for heaven's sake remove the cover, don't keep it on. Then uh, just by removing uh, the cover you probably are extending the tube life at least to twice as long or even longer. And if you put on a fan, that's again a factor more to help your tubes live. Uh, also, my scribble done a note just to keep mentioning that if you go drastically lower than the 100% rating, then you get drastically longer tube life. 
So basically, if you go, let's say, as low as 30% of the uh, potential tube dissipation, you also get uh, much less power output, but instead of, let's say, a 5-10 thousand hours long projected tube life, you will get a 100,000 plus hours of operation. So basically, you can turn on your uh, amplifier and, and actually, we will see later on, if you don't turn off the tab, you don't keep on turning it on and off, it, if, and it's just dissipating 30% heat, that's, uh, that, that amp will last you probably like 30, 40, 50, 60 years, the tubes in operation. You will get much less power output, but hey, if you want to go, let's say, uh, ditch your current hungry loudspeakers and go for some that are 10 dB higher sensitivity, even if you cut the uh, power to a third of what you are capable at 100% dissipation, you are still getting uh, 3 dB or so or more potential out of your system than using uh, that lower sensitivity with, with higher power. So, so that's one thing. And then, but you can also cut down on the dissipation because it's not, not the amount of heat uh, that the tube produces, but the amount of heat that can be conveyed away from your tube. So basically it's the, 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 the the bulb surface temperature that we can measure and, and the general uh, ratings because everyone like rates their tubes differently. Each manufacturer, each, each use has its own different rating system. Some rate more conservatively, some rate uh, less. But what counts really is you can get like, like a, a thermometer. I have uh, one somewhere here, so maybe there. Uh, no, no, uh, it's not in my reach, but I will show it. I have shown it in some of my previous videos only anyway. But you can point it uh, at, at your vacuum tube and measure the surface temperature of the bulb. And, uh, and if you read uh, something like 240 degrees Celsius, that's an indication that you're, or more, uh, then it's an indication that your vacuum tube is going to have a very short life. If you are reading 200, it still indicates not, not very good at all. If you are reading something like 150 degrees Celsius, then it, it, it will have a very reasonable life. And if you are reading below 100 degrees on the bulb, or maybe you are reading like 60 degrees Celsius on the bulb temperature, so you can even touch the the, the tube and, and hold your hand on it and, and you are still fine, then um, that tube will last you a lifetime. And uh, I have some, one of my previous videos where I show the, the temperatures of my Ampex amplifiers, vacuum tubes, and um, it's quite interesting and educational, I think. Anyway, I had my fun with it. <laughs> so, Basically, uh, depending on ventilation and other things that you employ, even with relatively higher power dissipation and power output, with forced ventilation and cooling, you can still bring your bulb temperature down as if you were just running much lower uh, dissipation on your tube. But I, I keep on calling it dissipation, but it, it's really like voltage times the current, so it's the wattage really that's being produced by the tube, and most of it is going to get released into your uh, air as heat. So that, that's what I'm talking about. So we checked that out, we checked out ventilation, but with ventilation you need to know that, and no, that's a segue, I'm not going to get into for school transmitter tools because that's a, a thing for a completely different video. I'm already at nine minutes and out of the 15 points I'm at point number two. So let's pick up or paste, paste a little bit, uh, get faster. Uh, number three I wrote down was uh, cathode depletion. What on earth is that? 
and that's that's something that's uh, that's also causing like a constant weakening just like a, a high heat dissipation lack of ventilation uh, just constantly drains the uh, the ability of your power tubes or, or any other tubes which are in run hard to uh, to have a nice long life and the parameters, the, the emission of the cathode is slowly and constantly going down. And, and, and the cathode depletion happens when your vacuum tube is operating at a too high current. So basically when too many milliampères are being demanded from that tube because each vacuum tube has a cathode in it and that's the element that emits the electrons and and all of them depending on the cathode can emit a certain amount certain milliamps of uh, electrons and if we are running them hard then it will deplete the cathode so it means that uh, there's only so many electrons that uh, a tube can emit through its lifetime uh, normal or I would say that's not entirely true but what how it is that uh, there's a certain milliamperage that the cathode is capable of emitting without damaging itself if you force it to to give you more than it can then it's going to get damaged so it's you are going to rip off electrons from atoms which should not uh, uh, release electrons and that's when you get damage occurring and there's a lot more uh, where we could go into it like uh, um, um, oxide uh, coat, coated cathodes versus thoriated tungsten cathodes they, they behave very different with the uh, thoriated filaments you can uh, rejuvenate uh, if when their depletion goes down, but that's I talked already about that several times. Anyway, just quick mention here for those who who, who just joined in. Next one, turn on inrush. That's uh, that's also a huge problem. It's not going to cause a, a constant, steady deterioration in the emission capability of your vacuum tube which manifests as a gradual loss of power uh, but uh, what it's going to do is it is stressing your filament what is turn on inrush it's when you turn on your amplifier and the vacuum tubes filament the, the heater element receives the voltage when it's cold its resistance is only a fraction of the resistance when it's operational so during that time it conducts several times higher current compared to when it's warm so and and that really high conductance really high current running through the filament stresses it out a lot and when there are tiny uh, problems in in the metal structure tiny impurities each time uh, we, we turn it on, each time hit the inrush current hits it, those impurities are, are getting worse and worse and worse. So as the current is running through, the, it, it starts to react with the, uh, with the uh, healthy part of the filament and the whole thing is getting degrading and getting in a worse and worse and worse shape. And, uh, and you know that you are in trouble when once you turn it on, and uh, there's the tremendous inrush current and, and the tube just pop, doesn't turn on. So what you notice, you turn it on and it starts, maybe it starts glowing and then the glow stops and nothing happens and tube is dead. So in, and then when you pull the tube and you uh, test it and you find out that it has an open filament. So this is how open filaments happen on vacuum tubes that they are caused by this uh, inrush current that's that's like a common cause and and you can predict that by limiting the inrush current how not now because you're already at 40 minutes <laughs> so next one cathode temperature so if we are running our cathodes too hot 
or too cold, which is defined by the filament's temperature if it's an indirect heated tube, and if it's a DHT, a direct heated tube, then the cathode and the filament are the same thing. So if our heater voltage is too high, then what happens is that the uh, uh, when we apply the high voltage on it, it's going to strip uh, or more easily deplete the electrons uh, from, from our uh, cathode. And, uh, and basically that extra heat will just force out uh, that uh, layer which is capable to emit electrons and, and we, we just burn it up. And uh, the, the good thing about it is when you are running the heater hotter, uh, you can also hear it in the amplifier that you'll have more power coming out of it because it can release electrons more easily. It requires less driving power from the driver tube to release the electrons, so it will sound more dynamic, more powerful, and there is a temptation to crank up the filament voltage. But every single vacuum tube datasheet warns you that if you crank it up by 10% or more, then it will cause you significant shortening of tube life. And if you crank it up by 20%, then it will cause you a drastic decrease in tube life, maybe less than 100 hours you can expect from a tube that has like that grossly mismatched high heater voltage and also when you have such high heater voltages the inrush when you turn on your amplifier that current is just vastly over exaggerated and uh, and maybe you won't even run into the issue that your cathode depletes maybe just the filament will open up before that hundred hours anyway next one heater cathode voltage differential so, looking at each tube datasheet, they specify what is the maximum voltage differential that can be between the uh, filament, the heater element, and the cathode itself. And, and why is that important? That's important because it is a common practice that the, all, all of the tubes in an amplifier are run by the same filament transformer. Mm -hmm. And if there's like vast differences between the potential of, uh, of two tubes, then that's going to stress out that vacuum tube that has that big differential. And it's going to cause a breakdown between filament and cathode. And it's going to age your tube and going to cause all sorts of problems. And, uh, and other than that, uh, so, so why do companies still do that, when, especially when you have something like a cathode follower uh, tubes in your amplifier or direct heat, I mean direct coupled amplifiers, just avoid uh, running the cathode followers and the direct coupled followers from the same filament transformer. Just use a different one and reference them to to each of the of the tubes uh, so that there's no big cathode heater potential. And by the way, I think this is my personal personal opinion that one thing why direct heated tubes sound better than indirect heated is because there's the uh, 